chairman of the Finance Committee of Parliament, James Abedje, says the amendments to the Pensions Act will rather make pensioners have more access to more funds when they retire. The amendment seeks to reduce accrued benefit to pensioners in the country from 50% to 37.5%, a situation the workers say will worsen the plight of pensioners who already face a number of challenges. But speaking on Joy News Desk with me, um, James Abedi noted the Forum for Public Sector Registered Pension Schemes should rather approach the Social Security and National Insurance Trust SNIT and the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, NPRA, to have their issues addressed. Um, consulted in a decision to uh, the amendment sections of Pensions Act 2008 Act 766. Is that a case? Well, I will not be able to respond to the claim that they were not consulted before the bill was brought to Parliament. But when the bill was brought to Parliament uh, under a certificate of agency, simply because by Act 766, uh, with the transitional provision, within five years, the calculation of the pension should be reviewed. Uh, by which, because of some amendments that were made by bringing the number of years from for voluntary retirement from 55 to 50 years. And then also because initially at 247, I think PNS law 247, which, is, which established the SNIT, SNIT was handling both uh, tier one and tier two. But with the at 766, tier two component is now being transferred to fund managers who will be managing that one. So pension is now handling only tier one. That has called for changes in the basis of the calculation. So when the close tax people are talking about this, I think what they should look at uh, adequately is that if the basis about 25% has been transferred to tier two, the basis for the calculation of pension, if it continues uh, using the old formula, need will not be sustainable. The yeah, one will never be sustainable. Because the benefit, what they use in calculating that will, before they were using the, uh, the previous calculation, portion has been taken from them to tier two. So that is one reason. Now, when the bill was laid in Parliament at the Statute of Agency, because if it's not done before the end of the year, those workers who will be going to retirement by the 1st of January 2015, calculation for their pension cannot be done. So these those workers will never receive their pension until the law is amended. And that will also be a violation of that particular law. So what was done was that for us to work on it, I pass it before Parliament go on recess. Now, when the bill was laid, I received a letter on the very day that we were going to uh, discuss the amendment. The closer got two letters. The first one was dated uh, the previous day, and then the second was dated the very day that we were going for the meeting. Now, what was the first letter saying? The first letter saying that they have concerns in some of the clauses, and they made a proposal what they think should be done. So that letter, I received it. Then the second letter, which was dated the following morning, or that morning that was going for the meeting, they also demanded that they want to be given the hearing so that they can appear before the committee, which was too late for us to meet, because we were going to meet at 8.30 that morning, and then when I got to office around 8 o'clock, I received the letter. So when we went for the meeting, I told the minister that this is the letter I received. It's not possible for us to invite them because of time factor. But what we'll do, the committee will do that. The committee will take their concerns on board. Fortunately, they have uh, made references to some of the clauses and they made their proposal what they think should be done. So we will discuss both alongside what we have in the bill and then the position will be taken. Now, that is exactly what we did. Now, some of their concerns were taken on board. Some were not taken on board. So I do not think that if we do not take all their concerns on board, they should go by the way they are going. Because it's a win-win affair. Now, one of the examples that of their concerns which was taken on board was that when the chancellor is going to be made for continuous uh, contribution to the SNES, it should be done with the collection or the contribution of the member plus interest. That is the way they put it. In the bill, it says that only their contribution should be transferred to me. We thought that their concern was right because if the person is making a contribution, 
in any interest. So what we did was we amended that bill to say that their concerns should, uh, the con collections on the contribution should be transferred together with the returns on that contribution. So we took their concerns on board. There are areas that their concerns were not taken on board. So if they said that they were not consulted before the bill was brought to the House, I would agree with that because I do not know what the minister did before coming to Parliament with the bill. But when we talk about Parliament, we did not uh, invite them to come because of the time factor. Uh, the notice for the, for the request was too short. Uh, we will not be able to do that. And for that matter, we didn't do it. But they are concerns that they brought. We consider them as we, do, we work on the bill before we pass the bill into law. Uh, well, the uh, Forum for Public Sector Registered Pension Schemes also says the amendment is a further reduction of the uh, paltry benefits. Uh, I don't know if I got that from your explanation. Uh, for them, workers receive and that's net. Uh, is that a real, uh, really, what uh, will happen? No, let me explain again. Okay. So under the first act, under the first act, PNC Law 247, it is neat that was handling both tier one and tier two. Mm. So when they were having tier one and tier two, the basis of calculating the pension was based on 50% of the members' contribution. Now with the Act 760, that is the Nation, uh, National Pension Regulatory Authority Act, 25% of what NIT was receiving has now been moved to okay. which is being managed by separate private uh, fund managers. Okay. So you cannot continue to use 50% at the basis of computation for pension for members. That will not make the tier one sustainable. That was why the percentage was moved from 50% to 37.5%. That is the reason. But the fact still remains that no worker is made worse off. I'm also a contributor. So I cannot sit on a committee that work on this, knowing very well that I'll be worse off. On access to good drinking water is a basic right that should not be denied anyone. But this is not the situation for residents of Adakru Tarapanu in the Volta region. Residents trek long distances to access the only source of water in the community. It is 7 a.m. and Mary Atam is going to fetch water. Mary and her family have relied on this water for years. The water is used for cooking, bathing, and drinking. This farming community cannot boast of a single borehole, let alone pipe-borne water. Not only do residents have to contend with not getting bitten by snakes that hide in the bushes that lead up to the water side, they also compete with livestock for the water. I am the water. Akala you no enu time you clean you pete cono a chinu up to now. Kuchile a chimida kamel and yabo ye chinu milazan. A yam many versus enemy, a chinya kum, the problem nemi le jukome. Uh a chinu mila men you nimu, a but when you kaga yila, a zame and you have a bully. Kaka la the kamali ava no re a yakwanu. Adequate and safe water is important for human health and well-being, as well as economic production and sustainable development. Failure to ensure the safety of drinking water may expose communities to the risk of outbreaks of waterborne diseases, of which Adaklutarapenu is no exception. Oh, I'm 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 Although accessing good drinking water should be a basic human right, many people do not have access to safe and adequate drinking water. Many people struggle daily in their search for water to drink let alone one which is safer and adequate. The community also lacks a decent place of convenience. Therefore, both the young and old practice open defecation. 
Residents also allege they have not received any assistance from agric extension officers when it comes to the spraying of their farms. Agric tova grani na yuvemi ya kunkwa lo yobo akani michi umami yobo ni utami yantu of bli kumi sana anu yeba wakule na miva iga kala mo vana o tami yantu kwe une yantu mi plena chike una rema anu yeye juu mi mi avani mafi ya ni mede fatila zonha kunkwa nyona nami. According to them, any attempt to secure bank loans has proven very difficult. As we mi ami zwa gbe de lota mi ji na alum be mi akomi akwa dagbe mi pone. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, has maintained the current tariffs for water and electricity for the first quarter of 2015. The decision of the PURC using the automatic adjustment formula follows the stability in the exchange rate and the falling oil prices. Colleague Latif Idri spoke with members of the public on the decision by the PURC to maintain tariffs. The Public Utility Regulatory Commission, PURC, has maintained tariffs for water and electricity for the first quarter of the year 2015. Now, Robin, today we'd like to find out what exactly you make of this situation. Are you excited? Or you think the PURC could have done better? Now, to talk more about this, I have with me here... Nicolas, Nicolas Atipo. Nicolas Atipo. Um, what do you make of this, this from the PURC? Oh, okay. Actually, I think it's good, but you should have done it earlier before, you know, this next year. Because looking at the standard of living this year was quite hard, high, and it's like people are not, you know, um, saying good thing about the entire utility staff going on this year. So... Uh, I suggest, you know, they should have, you know, started it earlier, right, to enter the nest, they don't know how to strategize their own listen, resources. But you make use of electricity at your place of work, and so how, how is it going to help you? Okay, to, to help us a lot, because um, a lot of things, we don't use electricity that much. Um, we normally do it on um, credit cards and bomb and the other stuff. And those are used electricity and all that much, so um, it doesn't affect us that much. Yeah, right. but, but it's going to help your business. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Bahamas. It's yeah. all. It's all. Thank you. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Okay. I'm William, Mr. William Abangayaro. So what do you make of these developments by the PURC? Well, already he has punished already. Either he increases or he's not increases. Already he punished the public workers already. To me, in fact, the government has disappointed public workers. And look at today, I'm not coming for my salary. How do you expect me to enjoy the, the, my family, and my mother, the old lady at the north, how, do, how are they going to survive? Look at a worker today, 24th, I'm not coming for my salary. Wow. Is it enough for us? So in fact, I'm disappointed in the government. Wow. Either he increases, he's not increasing, I don't care. You don't care about him? I don't that. care about him. Because you think, you think he's already beating you enough? You no, know, he has punished workers, in fact. Four years, no increment for public workers. How do you imagine? In fact, I'm disappointed in this government. Wow, wow. Yeah. I can, I can see the passion with which you are I'm, talking. I'm very, very, very sorry for voting this government, for him to punish me for four years without no increment. And he has increased petrol and everything, every time, and he's not even increasing worker salary. In fact, I don't want to talk in a match. Squashy. You rolling? Okay, so your name? I'm a Francis Squashy. So, so what do you make of this development yeah, by the PURC? I think they should further reduce the prices because their services no good to us in terms of the light the light is not stable the water is not flowing they are to me my expectation is to reduce the prices for us okay. and that is my views yeah. but, but you think that the stabilization of the prices will help us in any way no it's to not help us okay. it's not help at all in any way it's not help us so you want yes us to, to reduce the should price be. so that we should, have, we should be free small okay. because we are, we are too tight Thank uh, you. That is my view. Thank you. Thank you. The fact is, if they will be able to stand on that and they will not increase it, it will be very nice. But for me, I don't believe them. 
Okay. Uh, I don't believe them because normally they say it and they don't uh, what, stand by their words. No, I don't believe them. Mm -hmm. Now, let's even look at I mean the, the service they delivered to us this year. What, what, what is your assessment of, of the yeah. service? The yeah, services given were very poor, very, very poor, in such a way that I don't think they should rather reduce it, okay. not, not thinking of increasing or even being stable. Mm, their services given to us are very, very poor. Okay. Yeah. Your, your name, sir? My name. It's not exciting to me because for this year, for instance, the service they rendered to us wasn't that quality and then they maintain it net. They have to reduce the prices of everything so that we we'll have we we'll know that okay they didn't serve as well this year. So next year they're going to do a better job by reducing it for us so that we the Ghanaians or citizens in this country will feel a lot better and then we we'll know that they are serving us. So so you think the maintenance or maintaining the price wouldn't help? it wouldn't help me. Because we are they are increasing it this year. We are paying, we are buying it, and yes, though, we are having this shortage of low shedding and other stuff. So, next year, if they reduce it for us, we we'll know that they owe us this year, so they, are, they will be paying us next year. That will be better for us to take than them maintaining it. It's not an option for them. They just have to reduce it. Well, my problem is if the government is going to give it a, a better service and it increases the how they call it the light bill, we don't have a problem. We are ready to pay. But right now, the problem we are facing right now, we are not getting the light to where you're supposed to get it. You see, because the, the way the light off is going on right off and it's affecting our gadget. You see, and right now you don't have money. Maybe they said they should stop selling how they call the home use and whatever it is. Where are you going to get the money to buy? Go and buy the new appliance. That's our problem. So if the government is going to, I mean, giving them a better service, we are ready to pay. If it increases the hard record, the light bill, we are ready to pay for the good service. Yeah. This time they are not going to increase. They say they will not increase. Neither will, will they decrease. So they will not increase it. Yeah. Oh, that thing is so. They will maintain the price. Uh, okay, we thank we thank the government for that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's okay. It's okay for us. We thank it for that. Um, okay. Yeah. ASEP calls for reduction in fuel has their cry been heard. We'll tell you, we'll tell you the details right after this break. Time for staying on MTN led the pack of telcos in gaining data subscribers in the month of October. MTN made about 135,000 new subscribers, shooting its base by about 1.7%. This shot up its market share marginally to 51%, representing a little below 8 million subscribers. This is contained in the market share report from the National Communications Authority, NCA, for the month of October 2014. Generally, the data market growth slowed down to about 1.6% from a rate of 5.4% recorded in the previous month, September. Following MTN's lead, Vodafone recorded a highest growth rate of 4% after it added about 105,000 new data subscribers. The Africa Center for Energy Policy is asking the National Petroleum Authority to reduce fuel prices in their next review following the drop in crude oil prices. They want the NPA to be transparent in how they settle debts and not attribute an increment to debt payment. Many expect fuel prices to go down following the continuous drop in oil prices, but the MPA maintains it will use the over recoveries from the fall in crude oil prices to settle the debts of BDCs. For ASAP, the drop presents an opportune time for fuel prices to go down. We should see a review uh, of prices downwards. NPA needs to come across as a credible uh, uh, agency and regulator of the sector. You know, when prices are coming down and you want to stay where you are, and when prices go up, you want to increase prices, you don't appear to be credible, you know, uh, operating in a regime that is supposed to be automatic, you know, adjusting between the low and high prices. Because we have seen further drop in prices from the 70s to now $60, uh, uh, we need to see 
a reduction in prices to, to, to build that confidence that the consumer needs you know, in, the, in the organization. And I think that MPA would do itself a lot of good to do that. ASAP also called on the MPA to be more transparent in how it utilizes inflows. We need to know how much we owe, how much has been recouped, at what rate, you know, what was the margin that was put on, and does it meet, you know, uh, uh, the needed uh, uh, flows to be able to re recover uh, or pay back th those debts. I think the transparency around it is what is critical because it is a lot of money when it comes to oil, even downstream. If it's once a peswa on each letter, it amounts to huge uh, 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 flows. And we need to be transparent about what is coming in, how are we paying off. And once people know transparently you know, how you are dealing with that situation, I think they can understand. Rather than just sitting in your office and say, we are paying debt, how much debt are you paying and how are you generating that? revenue to pay the debt. It's important we are transparent about that and, and, and NPA hasn't been that transparent. Yuva Recoveries is meanwhile to enable government to pay off the 412 million Ghana cities debt piled up as of July this year due to high under recoveries of petroleum products. Government has only been able to recoup 174 million Ghana cities which represents 42 percent of the amount. Abigail Adamakwenchi for Joy News. Meanwhile, Ghanaians have called on government to reduce prices of petroleum products as the global crude oil prices continue to fall. The Brent crude oil price has fallen by more than 46% since its $116 June peak. See, prices of oil, I mean crude, keeps decreasing at the world stage. Yeah. But here in Ghana, we still maintain our prices as it is. People have been calling for government to reduce the price Look. to no avail. What do you make of that situation as well? Those who are calling government to increase or that, to decrease it is enough. If it decreases it, I think it will help us. But other, if you look at what is going on in fact, <laughs> my brother, if I continue to talk, I will cry. I can see that. Yeah, so enough is enough. Right. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank you very much. You have to say about that. Okay, about that one, uh, to me, okay, I hear somebody spoken about this issue about yeah. they say because previously government is uh, is uh, is paying i don't know how to use the word uh, uh, the the how the uh, this thing uh, oh subsidies. okay the, the subsidies yes okay. so now if the government reduce the price it will affect we mm. it will affect the government because we have we have a, a debt to pay, to pay. so okay. yes so if the government reduce the price still we have to uh, still it should be debt to be paid so how the, it is, it's okay, uh, okay. to avoid debt. Okay. Uh, so, that so, is, so you think the government should still maintain, maintain the, price? the price? As for fuel, those things, it's have to maintain. It's okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you, man. For government to reduce fuel prices, because on the world stage, we have prices falling as low as $60 per barrel. Yeah. Yet still, in our country, we still maintain the prices as it is. What is your take on that very one? I think it's very bad, because any time there is increase in the world market, they increase it here. So a moment the price are going down, the best thing the government is supposed to do is to reduce the what? The price of fuel in our country. Yeah. Because life is not easy for anybody. Yeah. All right. mm. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I heard that they said they reduced fuel prices to 2% in Ghana. That too is really bad. And then, I don't know, it's really bad. They have to do something about it. This is a country, the law doesn't work in this country. What they are doing to us is not good. It's really not good. It's very bad. How can they do that to us? The world has reduced it. And yes, the Ghana says the government is owing. They are taking it out of that. They should, they should at least allow the government to pay its own. Give us what we want. We are Ghanaians. We are paying for fuel. And we buy the fuel. Light is not working. In fact, Ghana is bad. For more news, you could go on to myjoyonline.com for more Christmas news updates for other news around the world, around Ghana, all on myjoyonline.com. You could also log on to multitvworld.com for more news. My name, once again, is Gladys Osei Oredu. Do enjoy your Christmas season.